we consider a certain particle p at the reference configuration on an, a certain differential of surface defined by two adjacent particles, q and r. So that in gray defines the differential of surface, and they belong to a certain material surface whose normal is capital N. Normal means unit normal. Okay? So it's the modulus one. Okay, we can talk about what is called the vector differential of area. What is the vector differential of area? It's something that we define as a vector whose modulus is, at this point, the area differential of area, which is a scalar, and whose direction as vector is given by n. That is what is called the vector differential of area, right? Of course, if I know this vector just by taking the modulus of this vector, what I would obtain? the differential variable because the modulus of n is 1, so the modulus of this vector is that. So, in, informally, the information about scalar differential of area is contained in that vector differential of area. But it's easier working, it's easier to work with that, with that kind of, of, of information. Of course, now imagine that, that I have a motion, that material surface has deformed, and at the present configuration, particle P occupies position P prime, Q, Q prime, R, R prime, and then, of course, that defines, by this, this, this uh, parallelogram, the transformation of the original differential of area, capital A, to the current differential of area, small a. Okay? But now, looking now at the term of, the, uh, of, the term of vector differential of area, then we can associate to this point at the special configuration a vector differential of area, differential uh, A uh, ball phase, or vector, equal to that differential of area times the normal. Okay? What is this normal? Well, the normal to the deformed surface at the present configuration at this point. Okay? So again, if I got this, 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 this area, this vector, just by taking the modulus, I could obtain the surface. The, the, the scalar, the value, okay? So now, that's quite intelligent manner of manipulating what we did in terms of differential of volume to obtain our purposes. For instance, now I could consider any, any, that's important, any uh, additional auxiliary particle S around P and define a segment which in addition to differential of X1 and differential of X2 provides this differential of X3. So now obtain, I obtain a parallel, a parallel pipe that is defined in that way, and I could co compute what is the differential volume of this parallel pipe, parallel pipe at here by computing the area times the height. The height is the distance of the projection of S onto the area peak R. It's called here differential of H. But look, this differential of H can be computed as the projection of this vector on this normal direction, which is nothing else than the inner product of differential of X3 times N. This is what is differential of H. So a way of computing differential of B0 is differential of X3 times N, which is differential of capital H, times the area. Okay? <coughs> Look, finally, N differential of area is the vector differential of A, so finally, the differential of volume at this, this associated to these three four particles at the reference configuration can be written as differential of area times inner product differential of X3. Now let's look at the, the form configuration. Particle position P prime, Q prime, R prime, and this auxiliary particle S that I've chosen, which is any, now is placed in position S prime. So I can define the auxiliary vector differential of X3. And again, the vector, the, the volume defined by these four particles, can be again defi uh, defined as the product of differential of X3 times the vector differential of surface, which is what we have here. Okay? So that's just preliminary, I mean, preparation of the theorem. Now, the way of doing that is okay. Now we know that in the first, the, the volume at the reference configuration is differential of, uh, at the final configuration, differential of area times differential of X3. Now replace equations that I know, fundamental equation of deformation. This segment 
is equal to f times the corresponding segment, differential of x3. Information that we got previously, the, the relation of differential of b here and differential of b here is given by the determinant of f. So that equation here. And finally, the one that differential of b here is differential of vector differential of area, capital A, times differential of x3. Now replace in these equations. So this is f differential of v0. Differential of a is differential of bt is uh, different, differential a differential x3 times, differential, times the determinant of f. Replace in here. And look, I obtain this equation here. This equation here said that this part is equal to that part. But what is important is that this differential of x3, which is chosen here, is any. I said, let's take an auxiliary arbitrary particle. So that equation, that's important, fulfills, fulfills for any differential of x3. That, for any, mathematically has some implications, which is that, in other words, what multiplies to the any has to be equal. If that part was not here, that is an argument that we'll use in the future several times. This for any, that has some implications. That whenever an equation like that is fulfilled for any, a product of one vector times one ve another vector is equal to another vector times the second vector for any value of the second vector, the only way of this, fulf this being fulfilled is that these two parts are here, are equal. So then, it's like if we were able to simplify, roughly speaking. We cannot simplify, we are not simplifying, just eliminating it then. But we can simplify, so to speak, because we have this for any. Because this particle here is chosen, this, this, this vector is chosen arbitrarily, any one. Okay? So, since this is fulfilled for any differential of x3, then I can simplify by differential of x3 and obtain that. And what is that? Well, from that, I can multiply f minus 1 by both sides and obtain differential of small area equal determinant of f times differential of a multiplied at the right hand side by f minus 1. This cancels that part, goes that part. So, this is the formula I was looking for. What is the relationship of this vector differential of area at the, ref at the present configuration in terms of the original differential of area vector at the reference configuration? If I know to want to obtain figures, scalars, then I have just to take modulus, and I say that the modulus of the vector, which is differential of area, is the determinant of f, which is a scalar, times the, the modulus of this product, n times f minus 1, times differential of a. 